Hey everyone, and welcome to this Dota 2 Beginner's Guide on how to play Lina Position 4 Soft Support. In this guide, I'm going to take you through everything that you need to know to get started playing Lina, one of the absolute fundamental Position 4 supports in the meta. Now, with regards to Lina, she does a lot of things very good, and in this guide, we're going to be talking about not only her fundamental attributes as a hero, we're going to be giving you a complete breakdown of all her skills, I'm going to be taking you through a complete item uh, and build progression, and I'm also going to show you some in-game examples of how to best utilize her abilities. Let's get started. Now, the first thing to talk about with Lina is, in fact, that she has certain characteristics that make her unique in the world of Dota. The first is that, well, she's a sister of Rayleigh the Crystal Maiden. That's kind of irrelevant, but it's something I just throw out there. They're both nukers as well. They both, uh, you know, Crystal Maiden uses ice magic and Lina uses fire. And what's interesting about her is that Lina is a lot more on the nuker side. So Lina has a few things that make her very unique, and one of them is the fact that she can almost kill a lot of heroes from full HP to zero with a burst of her abilities. When you couple Light Strike Array with Dragon Slave, and then you add in a little bit of Laguna Blade, most enemies will be near death if completely dead as it is. You add in the auto attacks from Fiery Soul and suddenly enemies will have a very hard time dealing with the burst potential of Lina. You, she also is a hero that can scale very well, and as a position 4, if she starts getting some itemization, and she starts getting some money and a few kills, she can actually begin to kind of become a bit of a pseudo carry. She can do a lot of damage in the late game, and is a type of position 4 hero that can really kind of have a long lasting effect in a longer game. Some supports tend to feel like they kind of fall off a lot and just become fodder. Lina can actually maintain her damage potential with her Agnum Shard and her Agnum scepter as well she's a great hero and one that's a lot of fun to play rather unique to lena is her attack range you'll notice that it's at 670 attack range and what's amazing about that it is one of the highest attack ranges in the game uh you know very similar to ancient apparitions and techies um she can attack from very very far uh most ranged auto attackers people like uh you know wind ranger has 600 so lena has 70 units of attack range further than most which allows her to right cl uh, right click harass enemies in the laning stage very effectively. It also allows her to keep her distance and stay safe in team fights and in uh, enemy encounters. But most importantly, as a position for soft support, it'll allow you to effectively harass the opposing carry and the opposing uh, opposition position five very effectively from that range. Most of which cannot actually return without getting well into your range. Like for instance, even like, you know, melee cores will have to go 670 units of distance before they can even attempt to hit you. You can get a lot of free pot shots in, and when you couple in Fiery Soul, suddenly, Lena's attack speed is pretty uh, fierce, so she's a great hero. The other thing you need to know is that she has very high intelligence gain. She gains a lot of mana very quickly and a lot of mana regeneration. She also starts with a very wide mana pool. At 435, she's actually pretty good in terms of the mana side, unlike Crystal Maiden, who can only really uh, cast two spells. But if you take into consideration that LSA is only 100 mana, you can kind of spam it during the laning stage, honestly, at every given opportunity. So mana issues are not really Lena's problem until she starts comboing Light Strike Array with Dragon Slave and finally Laguna Blade. Suddenly, mana becomes a major factor. Okay, but during the laning stage, mana, not so much of a big deal. But anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the other thing I love to talk about is her counters and her picks. With every guide I do, I like to include one of these screens. I've talked about how to make this yourself in one of my prior videos, but also you, all you need to know is that you click down here in the, the sort by area, you can create your own new preset and you can design it in any way you wish. Custom layout, whatever it is you want. It's pretty easy, it's really effective. With Lena, there are a few heroes that I would like to ban in ranked play. Drow Ranger being one of them. Drow does not inherently counter Lena, but she makes the laning phase a little difficult. The reason for this is because Drow Ranger, well, is a ranged hero. She actually has 625 attack range, 25 more than most ranged heroes. So it's kind of hard to harass the Drow Ranger in the laning stage. She gets to sit kind of safe and far away from, uh, from Lena. You can still trade with her, but it's a little less effective. You also have heroes like 
Faceless Void, uh, Anti Mage. They do a very good job on getting on top of Lena and bursting her down. Uh, you know, Lena will never have mana if she's attempting to trade, uh, you know, straight up with Anti Mage. And also because of her high mana pool, uh, you know, the ultimate from Anti Mage, Mana Void, will be very effective against uh, Lena as well. In particular, there's a few heroes, especially at lower MRs, you want to pay attention to banning Juggernaut and uh, Lifestealer are two. The reason for this, they both have magic immunity built in with Blade Fury on Juggernaut and of course Rage on Lifestealer. This magic immunity makes Lena very susceptible to them just closing in on her. PA can, bl uh, can blink right on top of her. These are heroes that kind of really make quick work of Lena. And remember, any major BKB builder like Faceless Void, Anti-Mage, and others can be problematic because basically every single thing that Lena does is magic based. The only thing that you can do is you can right click with Fiery Soul and if you are a mid Lena, sometimes you build like a Daedalus or damage items, but if you're a position 4 support, you're not building those damage items. And so once they start getting BKBs, the only way you counter that is via your Aghanim Scepter which allows you to pierce spell immunity and do pure damage with your Laguna Blade. So. Bear that in mind. With regards to, um, you know, who you can pick against, heroes that are very susceptible to burst, right? Ancient Apparition has almost no HP. Clinks, no HP. You catch him, you basically three-spell combo him, he's dead. Uh, Necrophos. Necrophos, right, when he goes into Ghost Shroud, he basically gets increased magic damage done onto him, right? 40%. You could basically kill him from, from 100 to 0 if he uses Ghost, Ghost Shroud. Huskar's ultimate, right? Life, uh, life Break, sorry does self damage it brings his health really low which allows lena to basically burst them right down uh, right down right so uh heroes that are very susceptible and like have no have no uh, have slow movement for instance tree and protector you break his trees crystal maiden can't really escape right venomancer you can blow through uh, blow through his wards very effectively and you keep a distance which is very hard for venomancer to deal with uh you can destroy nature's prophets uh, sprout trees and his uh his uh treants very effectively right Lena is very, very effective against heroes that do not have escapes, are susceptible to stuns, and allow her, and are not natural BKB builders. Okay, anybody that does not build natural BKB and spell immunity is very easy for Lena to deal with. In terms of backups, at position 4, I do recommend Dark Willow. Dark Willow is a lot of fun. She's also a magic uh, damage dealer as well, and I've done a full... Uh, I've done a full kind of guide on Dark Willow as well, which I'll link above so you can take a look at that. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's a full encompass guide. So if you are looking to learn Dark Willow as well, with along with Lena, you got that as well. And any other hero you want, in this case, Shadow Shaman's a fun one. He plays both position 4 and 5. Position 4, you get to prioritize like Blink Daggers and stuff like that. He's a lot of fun. But always have a plan going into the game. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into her spells. Let's get to it. Alright, so with regards to Lena's abilities, the first thing I like to do is level her up to 10 to show you guys which skills you should be prioritizing earlier in the laning stage. I should also mention, if you are looking for these skill builds, the item builds, and everything that I'm talking about in this in this, uh, this guide here, you can find it in the Dota 2 client under Beginner's Guide Lena Support by Octavarium. I'll also provide a link in the description and in the comments section so you can add it directly from the Steam Workshop as well, in the event you can't find it in the uh, Dota 2 client. But it's there. It's there, it's published, and it provides you with a ton of added information. Um, the first thing we're going to do is level Lena to 10, so you can uh, identify which skills you're going to be going uh, relatively early. You are going to be starting with Light Strike Array. You're going with Light Strike Array here simply because it provides you with a lot of utility at level 1. It's a 1.6 second stun that does a lot of additional damage and will effectively allow you to trade hits with the opposing carry and support very effectively. The other advantage to using LSA, as I'll, just, I'll talk about in my in-game example later in the video, is that you can often very easily predict the movements of the enemy carry because they're going to be approaching creeps with a low health because they want to get the last hits. So you can kind of bait them in in some way so that they walk into your LSAs because you know they're going to be going after last hits, okay? So LSA landing during the lading stage is actually relatively reliable and you'll start to get used to it, okay? Now one thing of note is that the opposing team will actually see you cast it. Like, Lena kind of like whirls her arms in the air, right? The enemy team does see that, okay? Bear that in mind. But as I said before, it has a pretty decent radius. It has a minor cast delay, which is that little whirl of her arms. The opposing team, good, good players will start to identify when you're going to cast it. 
But the stun is legit. 1.6 seconds, you can hit multiple targets, and uh, the damage starts to add up. The other nice thing about it is on a relatively low cooldown at 10 seconds, and it's 100 mana. And uh, Lina starts with a pretty good mana pool, as we discussed earlier. You're then at level 2 going to move into Fiery Soul. The reason why you move into Fiery Soul is because when coupled with the Light Strike Array, the added attack speed will allow you to hit the opposing uh, enemy like two or three times extra just from auto attacks right click damage her 75 ish range, uh, attack damage at that uh, level is not a major concern but it's going to add up very quickly when you add in the damage from lsa and the harassment you've been doing this entire time at level two you are going to be getting an additional point sorry at level three you're going to get an additional point into light strike array the reason for this is not only does it bring down the cooldown by one full second it only costs five additional mana okay which is kind of crazy it's only five additional mana for an extra 50 damage and almost two seconds of stun time which can be landed on multiple heroes okay it's a great value at level four things get interesting because of lena's uh, intelligence gain she gains mana very rapidly the result of that is that you can start to afford to cast multiple spells at about level four you can actually combo lsa right click a time once or twice dragon slave and then continue right clicking the two skills are going to amplify your fiery soul stacks which are going to allow you to attack even faster so it's very beneficial level four to get uh to get Dragon Slave, it's actually a, a pretty significant power spike for, for Lina. At level 4, she becomes a legitimate kill threat, okay? At level 5, you're once again going Dragon Slave. You're actually going to end up maximizing Dragon Slave before LSA at this point. At level 6, of course, you are taking your Laguna Blade. One thing to note, when you actually consider Luna's 3-spell three, uh, three combo, which I will be demonstrating in an in-game uh, example later, it's a ton of mana. 250 on Laguna Blade. 105 from Light Strike Array, 115 from Dragon Slave. You have to keep that in mind, that if you're going for a burst kill on an opponent, that if you're going to do a 3 spell combo, you need the mana. So bear that in mind. Are you going to bring some uh, some mana regen? Do you already have your Arcane Boots? Probably not at level 6, but anyways, bear that in mind, okay? It's often enough just to Laguna Blade an enemy, because you've probably been harassing them this entire time. And new players in that lower MMRs, they're less likely to be paying attention to your level. They're not going to be like, oh, I should heal up. Lena's level 5. When she turns level 6, she can just hit me with, for 500 magical damage, right? They're not really thinking about that. So you go to level 6 and you just right-click them and usually they just explode. If you've been harassing effectively. Okay? From there, moving towards level 10, you are going to maximize uh, your uh, Dragon Slave. And you are going to be taking, at uh, level 10 itself, you are going to be taking the Dragon Slave cooldown. The plus 30 damage is a lot of fun, but only really for core Lina in mid. Uh, as a position 4, you should be taking the Dragon Slave cooldown. And you're going to be going with uh, Light Strike Array at level 9. Kind of in the wrong order. It doesn't do it in the same order when you just jump it all the way to level 10. It's my bad. Anyways, you guys get it, okay? Level Level 9, you're taking Light Strike Array. At level 10, you're taking the Dragon Slave Talent. From there, you go to 350 health because you're a support. The Light Strike, damage, Light Strike Array damage is a lot. It's really beneficial. But the 350 health is the difference between life and death in many situations. From there, you also take the Spell Amplification at level 20. And at level 25, you will be taking the 25 second Laguna Blade cooldown, okay? The more damage you can do magically, the better. Let's talk about her individual items in a second, but what I want to show you here is I want to show you how her skills are utilized. So, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind with Lena. She's one of those heroes that her item builds really benefit her in a very specific way. Some heroes have a lot of item flexibility. Support Lena really doesn't, because there's a few things you really have to understand how to utilize the hero. With regards to starting items, I do suggest that you go Tango, Iron Branch, Sentry Ward, Mantle Intelligence, Circlet, and a Healing Salve. That is approximately, how much gold is it? It's just under 600 gold. The nice thing about this build here, you have Mana Regen for yourself and your carry, okay? The Healing Salve will allow you to stay in lane for as long as possible. The Iron Branch not only gives you added right-click potential, but you can eat an Iron Branch with a Tango to get additional healing. You have your Circlet and Mantle of Intelligence, which builds into your Null Talisman, which is your, one of your primary item progressions. And then you have a Sentry Ward, which in the example I'll show you, will be used near immediately to block the opposing uh, camp, the uh, opposition's pull camp, so that it'll prevent them from pulling in the early stages of the game, which should give you a lane equilibrium uh, advantage. Um, what you're also going to do here is, uh, so that's starting items. With regards to your main item progression, what you're going to do then is you're actually going to prioritize getting your brown boots and then getting your energy booster as well. 
What this allows you to do is it allows you to maintain your mana pool, especially when you're trying to maintain three spell combos with LSA, Dragon Slave, and Laguna Blade. The added mana also benefits your team, but most importantly, it helps you stay topped up. So when you get an opportunity to, to burst an opposing uh, person, you can. Now, from there, you have an option, okay? You have an option. You could either go Aether Lens or Yule's Scepter of Divinity. I tend to build the Aether Lens first. The reason for this is quite simple. Aether Lens requires an energy booster, a Void Stone, and an Aether, the Aether Lens recipe. What you can do is you can buy the Void Stone for 850, the Aether Lens recipe, and then you can disassemble, okay, your boots, your mana boots. So you basically right click, click, click disassemble. You click right here, unlock combining. And what happens is you're able to use the energy booster required for the Aether Lens. You're able to put it into your boots, okay? So you're basically, you take the energy booster out of your boots, which you've been using that whole time for the several minutes that you had arcane boots, maybe 10 minutes even. And then what you do is you build that into the Aether Lens. You effectively save, okay, 800 gold. And then what you do, you unlock combining on your boots and you finish Tranquil Boots by adding a Windlace and a Ring of Regen. Very inexpensive purchases. And now you have two very effective items. The advantage of this is once you're able to complete the Aether Lens, not only does Aether Lens give you extra mana, it gives you mana regeneration, but most importantly, it gives you increased item and cast ranges, which is beneficial for your next item, which is Yule Scepter, okay? Not only that, by the time you're able to get the Aether Lens, your mana regeneration should be at roughly the point where you should be able to do consistent three spell combos without having to worry about the Arcane Boots in the first place, okay? So, that is overall the plan. With regards to your next item progression, so this is what your items look like here. What you're going to do is you are going to be building the, the Yule Scepter of Divinity. The reason why you're building Yule Scepter is because it really benefits Lina as a reliable setup for your Light Strike Array stun. Okay? If we're going to put an enemy out here, let's see our boy Axe. Hey Axe, how are you today? I'm going to actually level you to max so you don't just die all the time. So, the problem with Light Strike Array is that enemies will start to see that build up. Now, as you can see, Light Strike Array, enemies without movement speed, it's kind of, it's kind of easier for them to get out. Okay? Once, once they start to anticipate your, your cast, especially when they start moving towards your, uh, your enemies, uh, sorry, your, your last hits, they're going to be able to effectively kind of determine, okay, Laguna, uh, sorry, uh, she's going to try and light strike array me. She does that little animation. I got to run to the side, get out of the way. They're going to be able to effectively dodge. What Yule Scepter does is it provides you with the chance to reliably stun. And this is something you're going to want to do in the practice mode. I do recommend you buy the Windlace first, by the way, because the added movement speed for Le uh, Lena, who has no escape mechanism, is kind of beneficial but once you finish it okay you have yourselves the yule scepter the nice thing about yule scepter is that it's also a basic dispel so if you are slowed or if there's just an effect on you you can use it defensively so let's say he's on top of you you can actually do this and wait for your team to come save you okay it's beneficial you'll be you'll be uh, surprised how often yule scepter can be used as a save but with lena specifically it is used as a reliable setup for Light Strike Array. What you're going to do is you're going to want to practice this in this type of lobby, okay? You are going to Yule somebody, okay? As they come down, you're going to hit them with a stun, all right? Do you see how that worked? And this is like, a, I played a lot of Lena games, so I've kind of gotten used to the timing, but I even still mess it up, right? They go up in the air, they whirl a little bit, and then you drop it. You got to time it with the cast delay. It takes a lot of practice, and as you get better at it, and you start to get uh, kind of leveled up, what happens is you do stuff like this. You get up the air, you drop this. Oh, I it didn't work because I actually clicked the hero. You, you can't click your uh, opposition usually, but in this mode you can. Drop it, here, down, and then you just light strike. So it's like you actually did the three small combo all at once, and you hit him for half his health. He's level 30, I'm level 12. Okay, so this axe took half of his health damage, Yule Scepter, into Light Strike Array, Dragon Slave, and Laguna Blade. And not even accounting for the fact that your teammates also see the setup as well, and also know that you can stun them. Okay, so that is why you use Yule Scepter on Lina. It provides you with a very reliable, I shouldn't say very reliable, because it is still a skill shot. You do have to time it, it's going to take some practice, but that is why you use Yule Scepter. Okay, and I'll be providing an example of this in the in-game examples as well. All right, from there, this is your main item progression. These are the items you're probably building every single game, okay? From there, let's talk about the optional items. Now, criminally underused in Dota 2's newer brackets is the infused raindrops. 
Okay, if you are being targeted by uh, you know ODs like uh, like uh, Outworld Destroyers, or you're being targeted by um, you know people that do a lot of magic damage, Zeus, who can hit you from very far away, has an alt that can be global. That is global, I should say. Infused raindrops can be the difference between life and death. In fact, if you're against Alina, you should be using infused raindrops because it'll save your life from a three spell three spell combo. But anyways, from there, in terms of the current meta, Solar Crest. Four Staff and Glimmer Cape are all very good defensive uh, support items, okay? You can use Glimmer, uh, sorry, Four Staff, for instance, if you happen to be against, like, say, a Clockwork. Where's my boy Clock? There he is. Okay, let's spawn ourselves a Clockwork here. So he goes Cogs, right? He gets his Cogs. He gets on top of you. He Cogs You're like, well, I'm dead, I guess. Nope, I got a Four Staff. I can get out of the Cogs, okay? Or, conversely... Right? If he cogs his, his, let's pretend this is our teammate here. Let's say he cogs his our teammate. You can actually force staff your teammate out of the cogs and save them. Okay? Um, Slar uh, Slark is very similar too. So if Slark leashes you with his pounce or an, uh, your, enemy, your ally with the pounce, you can use force staff to help him as well. Anytime you need to rapidly reposition yourself, an enemy or an ally, force staff is a great item for that as well. Um, another good item that you can consider is Glimmer Cape. Glimmer Cape can be used offensively and defensively. But much like this, let's say I see Clockwork coming at me, right? I can Glimmer Cape and get away, and he can actually can't target me or attack me unless he has, of course, dust or some way to reveal the fact that I'm invisible. It can also be used to, uh, like if an ally is being attacked by something magical, it can be used to basically give them a burst of magic resistance to protect them, okay? Glimmer Cape can be used to save an ally, so if they need to, like, I can't target an enemy, but uh, if I have an ally here, um, anyways, whatever. If I have an ally, you can cast it on an ally and help them escape and get away very beneficial um solar crest in terms of the current meta is one of the absolute best items in the game it builds from medallion so what you're going to want to do here i'm actually going to show you that let me sell these off for a sec okay so solar crest usually i build solar crest after these ones here and the current meta solar crest is really beneficial the first few items here chainmail um sorry sage's mask blightstone will actually build into the medallion of courage gives you additional armor and it gives you uh, additional mana regeneration the nice thing about it is when you cast it on an enemy it actually reduces their armor takes it takes it away from you as well and it'll allow, allow you to do more right click damage um it'll also allow you to apply the medallion of courage effect onto an ally as well so like a bristleback or your position three who's going to be running into the action the nice thing about this is that at lower MMRs, you often have carries that are like PAs, uh, Faceless Voids, um, Wraith Kings, anybody that just loves right-clicking people until they explode. You finish the medallion with a crown, four to attributes, you get your Wind Lace for speed, and finally a Solar Crest. And you have yourself a Solar Crest. And the nice thing about this, you're getting a lot of attributes, you're getting a lot of movement speed and mana regeneration, all things that Lena benefits from. But you're also able to cast on an ally, give them additional attack speed, additional movement speed, and additional armor. You can make your primary carry near unkillable. And it can provide your team with a ton of added utility. It also allows your team to take Roshan very fast. Because you can apply this to Roshan, which decreases his armor significantly and his attack speed. And it also allows you, and Roshan can be stunned by your Light Strike Array. So you become a Roshan taking machine. Uh, that is an item that I'm finding to be one of the best items in the current meta right now outside of that now these are all like unselfish items for your team but let's say you want to be a little selfish okay you want to do some extra damage you can go with the laguna laguna blade uh kind of uh agnum scepter the damage done becomes pure all right and we can actually test this i'll show you here i'll show you this where's axe come here axe i need you for a second okay mr axe i should i should put down a, a sentry here so we can see better Sentry so we can see better. Here we go. Okay, clockwork. We don't need you. You're gonna die. Now what I'm gonna show you guys here is right now I'm gonna take the Agnum Scepter out. I'm gonna hit him for with my Laguna Blade level 3 Okay, he got down to about 2200 HP, right? 2200 HP That's because he has magic resistance built in at 25% Now Laguna Blade becomes Pierce not only does it pierce spell immunity so BKB doesn't help him, but it becomes pure damage So he went down to 22 last time now we just hit him all the way down at about 2,000. Why? Because the 25 magic resistance is no longer being applied. So magic resistance is being ignored as a source of pure damage. Fantastic. It also pierces spell immunity. Uh, you can also get the Agnum's Shard, which is a lot of fun. What's the Agnum's Shard do? It basically makes Laguna Blade ground targeted and hit everyone in the range. Check this out. 
<laughs> it's pretty awesome. When you couple it with the Laguna Blade, uh, the Scepter, all of a sudden you're hitting people in an area of effect for 900 pure damage. It's insane, right? It's absolutely insane. It's a great skill. You saw Clockwork. I knew Clockwork was going to explode, but still a lot of fun. Aeon Disc is another very useful item. Aeon Disc is used in the event, like, say you don't have a Glimmer Cape that you can't use to escape. Lena cannot get away very effectively. She does not have an inherent escape. So Aeon Disc can be used to basically save her life in the event that uh, she gets initiated on. And hopefully your team identifies that, whoa, 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 one of our good damage dealers, our, our Lena 4, is being initiated on. My axe can jump jump in and like get a call on or you know my underlord can root everyone so that lena can get away the aeon disc is basically a kind of like get out of jail free card it's a you get to save your life run <laughs> right so it's pretty good it applies a strong dispel and uh it's also often forgotten that um you know the damage you deal gets turned to zero so don't like try and do your three spell combo when like the aeon disc is active just get away and save your life right it's a good item for like against pas and uh other heroes that jump on top of you, anti-mage, that can just, like, kill you, right? Very good item. Finally, Spirit Vessel. Spirit Vessel, as a position 4, is a very good item to build when you are against very tanky lineups. When you are against Axes, Bristlebacks, um, you know, Centaur War Runners, enemies with a lot of hit points. The reason for this is because it can be used to basically uh, do percentage-based damage to them per second, and the more health they have, the more each tick of damage is actually worth. It can also be used on allies for a flat 40 health regeneration per second, so you basically become a direct healer, which is pretty beneficial as well, especially when you want to sustain longer fights later in the game. Spear Vessel, a great item. Get it early though. It comes as an urn, and the urn charges do translate into Spear Vessel charges. And it's better to get it earlier so you can start accumulating charges from enemy deaths, okay? And in this guide, I'm also including here support items that are cons uh, kind of consistently purchased. Um, you know, just so you have quicker access to it. Because I think a lot of newer players are, like, having trouble, for whatever reason, fighting items in here. I, I noticed on some of, like, the, uh, the streams I was kind of watching and some of the coaching sessions I've done where people, you know, they had some hard time kind of just in the moment getting quickly uh, to their items. So I included this as well just to help you with the support itemization, okay? But anyways, that more or less does it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. The skills are relatively straightforward. Dragon Slave can be used to kind of catch people at far distance. You have your uh, Stun and Light Strike Array. You have your Fiery Soul Stacks, which help you attack faster and move faster. And of course, you have your absolutely beautiful Laguna Blade attack as well. Let's talk about some in-game examples so you, got, you, so you guys can see the hero in action. Alright guys, we're in this replay example here, and it just gives you a quick idea of how to play the laning stage. Now this is by no means perfect, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. So as I described earlier, you're basically going to be using your uh, early century ward to basically block that early camp. What you're doing then is you're going right to the lane, and you're going to be auto-attacking the opposing team as much as possible. I tend to want to prioritize the, uh, the carry, because they're the ones going for the last hits, right? Give some shots on the support if you can, and once again, look at that little stun. Very effective. Look, look at their health compared to ours already, right? They've had to commit resources to healing already, and when they do that, you end up winning the uh, the, the the game long term, the regen war, right? Now, as you can see, so that use of un like Underlord's ability, he should have watched my beginner's guy because that use of uh, Firestorm was very, very poor. But what you're seeing here is we're very close to the tower here, and we are de debating in the microphone whether or not we're going to pull or we're going to push the tower. Now, I ultimately decide we're going to pull, and I say, you know what, no, no, let's push the tower because I can see how this Underlord's playing. So I cancel that, and I go towards the tower and say, you know what, let's just force them under tower here. This guy throws down a ward. I saw it because I checked his inventory. So I tell the uh, the Underlord, because my courier's already coming, hey, bring a courier and bring a sentry with you as well good communication goes a long way and what you're gonna see here is I'm trying to predict when the guy the gyrocopter is gonna be coming in to get a last hit now it's not perfect he does sneak a couple on me but what you're gonna see here is anytime I can get a double stun I do and when I get that double stun I'm hitting him for as many free pot shots as I can look I am constantly attacking now I have very long range I'm trying to get denies when I can but I'm posturing myself in a way that makes it very difficult for these guys to get to me. Look, another stun on this gyrocopter. Why? Because I know he's approaching for last hits. Now, the Underlord's Firestorm was very late. Let's actually move back 10 seconds. This Underlord has the mana for the Firestorm. Once he sees this stun, that Firestorm should have been immediately in this area. He reacted a little slow. We could have actually gotten the kill on the gyrocopter. But you know what? Don't worry about your teammates. Worry about what you can do better. That's something that this Underlord can definitely improve on in the future. We clear the, century, uh, the Observer Ward because of good communication. 
Excellent. Okay. He's already had to use a self to heal back up. And as you can see, any chance I get to hit him, I'm hitting him. Right? And I know he can't pull because my sentry was there uh, prior. So I'm just getting free shots on the enemy team as best I can. Another stun on the, the, the tusk. I poke him a little bit. Right? So far, so good. And again, you're just seeing me constantly using my attack range to good effect. Right? Look. Like, I'm from on the other side of the trees. Right? And eventually, I actually put a ward here to get better vision across. But look, they're under their tower. And with an Underlord, the reason why we're not pulling very much is because we're trying to take this tower uh, relatively fast. Underlord is a very good pusher with his Firestorm. The result of that is that he disproportionately benefits from just forcing the lane under tower. Look, see, like this guy, this guy could die. And once again, he tried to get in, but he was a little slow. Well, Underlord is just slow as well. But look, you can see how relentless my right clicks have been. Relentless like I've just been assaulting them with right clicks the entire time and I'm not saying that like this is perfect Lena play, but this is a functionally what you want to do You want to prevent them from having an open lane You want to make them feel really bad in lane Lena really benefits from that right and eventually you can go you can stack you can pull you can do anything else right here I'm uh, checking to make sure that uh, he's not pulled because I don't have vision of him yet, but more or less that is more or less the the fundamentals of playing Lena in the lane. Say, look, Tusk, careful. He's saying careful. Gyro's at low health. He has sal uh, tangos. He has tangos. No salves on the way. He doesn't have the regen. He's at 360 health. One good firestorm and a couple uh, hits from me, and he's done. Right? He's done. So this is a good example on how you want to handle the laning stage as Lena. In this example, I'm going to be showcasing to you how you can utilize your Laguna Blade effectively to close out a kill on an enemy, and also giving you a good example of why it's so important that you rotate as a position 4. I saw that my Winter Wyvern, who was mid at the time, was in trouble. This Invoker has a level advantage, okay, has way more health, and is closing in on the kill on this Winter Wyvern. I rotate in. I have my LSA available. I have my uh, Laguna Blade ready. I've got mana. Let's see what happens, okay? So I come in here, right? They ping, they know I'm here, right? They see me. I get the LSA stun off, which is key. He's under tower. I'm hitting him. Now, what I want you to see here is I do have my Dragon Slave available, but what I also recognize is that he's going to get away quickly. So, right away, I identify that it's time to Laguna Blade. Now, I wanted to save it because if I could kill him without the Laguna Blade, it would have been fine. I knew Techies was coming. But in this uh, given situation, I recognized that Invoker was going to get away. So, my rotation not only saved the Winter Wyvern, but we end up exchanging Winter Wyvern for a kill on the Invoker. A great play, right? That's exactly why you want to rotate and make use of your abilities. My Laguna Blade's off cooldown. May as well use it make it uh, make it impactful in the game with that being said don't always don't ever actually use laguna blade to kill steel this is something i see very often in lower mmr games where you have laguna blade and you see an opposing hero just going down he's gonna die anyway but you decide to laguna blade him don't do that sometimes it's even beneficial to lead in with a stun with a stun uh with your lsa with your Dragon Slave, and then Laguna Blade. Not just to kill the enemy, but to drop them right down so that your course can then finish the enemy. And we're going to talk about that in a future example. Alright, in this example from the same game, I'm going to utilize the Yule Scepter to give you an example of the three spell combo from Lina. I have a Tusk who's at full health, who's being chased by minions. Tusk has no idea I'm here. I have vision on him. He does not have vision on me. I get the Yule Scepter off. I do the little count to my head. I get ready for the drop, right? We get the stun as he lands, I get the, I get the uh, Dragon Slave, I get the Luguna Blade, and I just keep right-clicking him. He tries to save himself, but the attack range that I have is so significant that I'm able to just finish him off from a great distance, right? And an extra Dragon Slave just for funsies. But as you can see though, and I gotta move, I gotta get out of here now. But as you can see, the LSA combo with Laguna Blade literally dropped him from full health to basically no health, right? It wasn't the full kill. But it's enough to finish him off and effectively take him out of the game. Now, I could I could I have saved it for a more higher priority target like a gyro or an invoker? Yes. But sometimes, especially as Laguna Blade drops in cooldown to down all the way to 50 seconds, there's a lot of benefit to um, to using it as rapidly as you can. Now I make a mistake here and I want to show you Yule Scepter again. I actually should not have gone back in here, but I want to show you this. Okay, not good use of Firestorm, but I am near death. I want you guys to check this out. I see the bullet coming from Gyrocopter, and I Yule Scepter just in time to dodge it. And the result of that is I basically nullify the amount of damage coming onto me, and 
That's right, I get away with my life. So not only can Yule Scepter be used effectively as an offensive weapon, it can be used to great effect defensively as well. And that there is an example of that. All right, and in this last example, we have a team fight here that utilizes a whole bunch of things that we've discussed to good effect. First of all, I've cast I've cast my Solar Crest onto my Drow Ranger to amplify the amount of damage my primary right clicker can do. I also identify my boy Shadow Shaman's in big trouble, but Shadow Shaman, I need you alive, buddy. So I utilize my Yule Scepter to save this guy's life. He was one hit away from dying. I set that Ursa, the, the carry on their team up in the air. I get him with the Stunner Rooney. Right? And what do we do? We lock him down. I identify that he's not going to die in time, so I use my Laguna Blade. I want to show that again. I kind of hinted at that earlier, okay? How you can utilize Laguna Blade not just to, like, secure a kill that you know is going to happen, but to make sure a kill happens. In this case here, I know that the, uh, I know that the Urs is in trouble, okay? We stun him. We lock him down. A little bit of overlap with the stuns. The Shadow Shaman could have done that a little better. But I can see that the stun's going to run out. So, I Laguna Blade him to make sure that my carries can finish him off, okay? That was the whole point of that. Once again, save my, my, uh, my ally with the Yule Scepter to Divinity, set up the stun, okay? A little, a lot of overlap actually with the, uh, the shackles there. I recognize he's not gonna die, so I Laguna Blade right away so that Weaver and Bristleback can kill him before he kills the Shadow Shaman. We take down one of their carries, we're still five up, I laugh, and we ultimately win the game. Anyways, guys, I hope that this guide helped you get started with Lena. As I said, a full guide will be available in the Dota 2 client. All you got to do is uh, look up uh, Lena uh, Beginner's Guide by Octavarium in the um, Dota 2 client. And I'll also include it in the description and in the comment section below. Hope you guys had a good time watching the video. Thank you so much for watching. And a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. Let's tower dive, and we'll see you in the next video.